If you just exported an SVG from Canva and opened it in Illustrator or Cricut and it looks completely broken, you are in the right place. I'm gonna show you exactly how to export from Canva to SVG without losing fonts, without mangled layers, and without getting any error messages. I've helped thousands of designers clean up messy Canva files, and in this video, I'm answering the exact questions you've asked me. I'm also gonna show you something Canva doesn't tell you, how their SVG exports are structured, behind the scenes, and what that means if you're selling your designs or sending files to your clients. Hey friend, I'm Sammy, and I help creatives, educators, and entrepreneurs bring their brand visuals to life using tools like Canva and Adobe Illustrator. My last video on exporting SVGs from Canva got such a huge response. I got so many comments like, oh, this video saved me so much time. I finally figured it out. But I also got tons of questions like, why does my SVG look different in Illustrator? Why are my fonts missing? I'm using Canva free. Do I have to have the paid version to even have the option to export to SVG? Today, I'm answering all of those questions and I'm not just showing you how to export. I'm gonna walk you through what to do after you export so your file works in Illustrator, Cricut, or anywhere else. Before we dive in, let's clear something up. Are SVG and vector files the same thing? Short answer, yes. Long answer, not always. SVG is a type of vector file. It's made of math, paths, points, and curves. This means it doesn't lose quality when you resize it, but it's not the only kind of vector file. Each one is better for different situations. SVGs are great for web, Cricut or other quick products, but if you're printing professionally or editing Illustrator, AI or EPS might be more reliable. So why are we even using an SVG? Because Canva only exports in SVG. This is an available export option if you're a pro user. But don't worry, I'll show you how free users can still create something very similar by working around that limitation. Let's start with Canva Pro version. First, open your design in Canva. Make sure it's simple. Not too many effects like drop shadows or glows. Those are not always gonna convert well. So for this video, let's just stick to flat shapes, solid colors, and text. Now click share and then download. So under file type, you're gonna choose SVG and you want a transparent background. For example, for a logo or a sticker, check that box. Then hit download. You've got your SVG, but we're still not done yet. If you stop here and upload this to Illustrator or Cricut, you'll likely still run into some issues. So let me show you what to do next. If you're on Canva free version, SVG isn't an option when you get into the download menu, but here's a workaround. You're gonna design your file the same, with the same tips, you're gonna do flat layers, minimal effects, simple shapes, and then you're gonna download it as a PDF print file. Open that PDF in Adobe Illustrator and then save it as an SVG from there. Does it take an extra step? Yes, but it will eventually give you more control over your font, layers, and structures. If you're still stuck, ask yourself, am I exporting this for print, for web, or a cutting machine? Because that's gonna determine how clean your SVG needs to be. Now here's where things can sometimes break. You open your SVG in Illustrator or Cricut and fonts are gone. The layers are flattened and you just, you suddenly can't ungroup anything. The shadows look weird. Cricut gives you an error, Illustrator says a piece of it's not found, so what's going on? The truth is Canva was not built as a true vector tool and it simplifies your designs when it's exporting, sometimes a little bit too much. So it might merge your layers, convert your fonts weirdly, or even bloat the file with excess code. That's why you need to clean the file up after you export it, especially if you're sending this file off to a client or it's a digital product. Ask yourself here, what would happen if I sold this file on Etsy without cleaning it? The answer is refund requests and bad reviews. So let's take the time to do it now. Let's jump into Illustrator. Once your SVG is open, Adobe Illustrator, here's what to do. First, select everything on your artboard, Command A or Control A, and then go to Object, Clipping Mask, Release to break apart any masks that may have applied. This is crucial if shapes seem stuck or behave strangely. Then you're gonna to go to object, ungroup. You'll likely need to do this a couple times because Canva often nests groups within other groups, which makes editing a nightmare until you finally get all of them apart. 
can potentially apply hidden grouping structures. If you skip this, you may not be able to move, color, or edit items independently. Another optional thing here is to go to appearance and object expand. If you've applied any effects like strokes or fills, this will just flatten everything into clean paths. Finally, you're gonna zoom in really, really close and delete any strange anchor points you see or any hidden paths. These are gonna clutter your file and create issues with either Cricut or web use or if you're selling them on Etsy. Now you've got an editable clean SVG that is ready to sell, print, or upload. Make sure you always test your cleaned SVG in Illustrator before sending it out. It's better to catch your issues now than deal with them after you've made a sale. Exporting SVGs from Canva isn't hard, but doing it right takes a few steps. That's why I made a free SVG export checklist that walks you through every single step that we've covered today. Inside, you'll find what to double check before downloading so your file is always error free. You can download this checklist using the link below. It's totally free, so don't forget to grab that. If this video helped, hit like, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss one of my videos, and drop any of your Canva questions below. I'd love to help you out in one of my next videos.